When I first saw the Indominus box, I knew I needed to paint the Primaris Judicer. I love this mini. I love his sword and his hourglass and his coat, but I hate his dumbass head. Fortunately, a head swap is a pretty simple conversion, and I ordered some heads off of Shapeways that I think will work great for this guy. When I'm finished painting him, I'm going to compare him to some of my older models that I painted a long time ago, and we'll see how far I've come on my hobby journey. Hello everyone, this is Destro, and welcome back to Realm of the Lich King. The first thing I needed to do when I was building the Judicer was build him a base. My Space Marines are on industrial metal bases, and I wanted to keep with that theme, so he'd fit in. I'm using some little half-dome craft pearls here to add quick and easy rivets to the base as well. A little bit of super glue, and you got some rivets. What I'm doing with the putty here is just masking off this part for priming. Plastic cement tends not to adhere well through paint, so I wanted to leave some area that he could get glued to his base. I'm trying something new in this video, where I'm going to be putting the paint colors that I'm using just uh, on the screen as text instead of talking about them. Easier for you to see what they are and look them up, and easier for me to not need to remember to mention the paint color. Uh, let me know what you think of this in the comments. All of the highlights on the black armor are layered up by mixing the various colors together and then using the black ink to help blend them together. The final highlight is a pure wolf grey though. A lot of this model is going to come out brown in the end, so I decided to make brown my second base coat color. I got the coat, everything that was going to be gold, his holster, all the other leather, his gloves, a lot of brown. Painting the coat was a process. The black ink helps darken down the middle where I'm not going to be highlighting. And then it was on to so much stippling. Using a stiff bristle brush and just kind of jabbing at the model. Uh, this is similar to dry brushing in that you need to take off a lot of the paint first, but works pretty well for adding some texture to leather. used a bunch of different browns, some in some areas and some not in other areas. You can see I didn't use the mahogany brown on the holster there, because I knew that I wanted, with so much leather on this model, to give all of the leather a slightly different appearance. So his coat's going to be one color, his gloves and another color, and his holster and pouches on his belt a third color. You don't have to go this far, doing all of this different uh, coloration on the leather, but I think you'll see in the final miniature that having that extra contrast and variety really, really helps the mini. For these little nicks and scratches in the leather, damage, abrasions, that sort of thing, I found that it helped quite a lot after I'd finished applying the little nicks of bone here and there to apply black ink to the upper edges of the nicks and scratches in order to make them appear like they're actually cut into the coat, like there's some depth there and these scratches have been kind of gouged into the leather. This step may not seem like much at first, but it really does help add a lot of definition and contrast to the final miniature. Doing this sort of thing, adding texture, it makes a big difference to the finished paint job. The contrast paints I'm using here were thinned down a little bit more to make a glaze. Contrast on their own would be a little bit thicker and more pigmented than I think I'd like here, but with a little bit of thinner added in, they make great glazes. This step really helped bring the leather all together. I was happy with it before this step, but after this step, I was really happy with it. This step will also help contrast with the black armor. 
the red-brown Gordrunta fur that I used on the coat is a warm tone, and really adds a warm tone to the leather, to contrast with the much cooler black. Vallejo Game Color Dark Green is a uh, funny paint for me. It doesn't cover super well by itself. You need to do a couple of thin coats to really get the nice dark green coverage with it. The process of doing the green highlights was just a lot of blending. The uh, colors that I used here, I mixed them together, I did a bunch of layering and blending. I did some nice thin highlights in the corner of the pauldron. And I even used a few more glazes to help tie the different blended layers together. I also painted the sword handle green because I knew that I wanted, compositionally, two different points of green on either side of the model. This really helps balance the final model out, I think. There aren't too many purity seals on this guy. There's one on his shoulder and one other on his backpack. And I painted these up pretty quick. I think there's only three layers of paint total on the seals, not counting inks. The basic brown, the mid-tone mixed the brown and bone, and then the final bone highlight. Honestly, the biggest challenge with painting these is that the one on his arm wraps all the way around his arm and I needed to get in behind it. It would have been nice if uh, that piece had been able to be left separate as a separate subassembly, but it was not. And then using black ink to help just dot that on, help uh, create the appearance of text on the seals. The reason I use black ink for this instead of black paint is that black ink will tend to be a little more transparent near the edges. Oh, the hourglass. The hourglass was again an exercise in layering. Lots of mixing together the colors that I used to paint the sand. Lots of dotting on thin little highlights and just variations of light where uh, sand grains individually would have caught a bit of it and stood out. I may have also used a little bit of Vallejo's Desert Yellow when I was uh, doing all the layering for this. I honestly can't remember, which is why I didn't put that paint up on the screen. So the highlights for the hourglass were, again, layered up with lots of different mixes of the paints involved and placed to emphasize the curvature of the hourglass itself. Little tiny highlights. I also made sure to put a couple of these over the top of the area where the sand was in order to help give the illusion that the sand was inside a glass container. Believe it or not, this hourglass was the most nerve-wracking part of the entire miniature. Once I had those highlights and reflections painted on there, I couldn't get anything else on it. Doing the handle with copper and bronze provides a little bit more of a reddish, bright metal. There's going to be a lot of gold on this guy, and I wanted the sword to stand out a little bit as a different metallic. Ultimately, it should still come out looking like bronze, but it'll be more of a reddish bronze than if I'd used a different paint as the base coat. The handle also has a lot of these little ridges and things that make for nice, nice uh, highlights. One of the things that I dislike is using pure silver to highlight uh, red or gold metallics. I know that technically it would look that way in real life, but I feel that tends to wash out the color a little bit, so I just do it by mixing silver in with the final highlight metallic. Once again, adding ink into the recesses, a quick little pin, sh pin wash here, really helps add definition to the sword. You may have noticed that during the brown step, I also base coated all of the areas that were going to be gold. 
I find that painting gold over brown helps provide an extra layer of richness and warmth to the gold. The gold eye lenses are something that I started doing back when I was first painting Space Marines. I'm continuing that trend now, mostly so this guy will fit in with the rest of them. If I had the option, I think I might have switched them to red. In general, warm metallics, like bronze and gold, do best with a brown ink over top of them rather than a black, which is why I've used sepia here. On my Thousand Suns, I tend to skip the glorious gold, but my Space Marines are, again, a warmer sort of gold, less ancient and old looking, and more new, polished, and well cared for. So I felt that the glorious gold made a good mid-tone there, and I should save the polished gold to use for highlights. Having the sepia ink in there also really helps add definition to the different layers, so it doesn't all just look like one color. This was a problem for me when I first started. My metallics at the time tended to come out looking a little bit flat, and it was because I didn't use any inks or shading to give them more appearance of depth. Sepia ink saves me again here. Using it to add more depth to the eye lens as a shade is much easier than trying to stop myself from getting paint on there in the first place. Here you see again I'm using a mix of paints for the final highlight instead of pure silver. I don't like washed out golds. And just a few highlights in places where the light would naturally hit. And breaking my own rule for the eye lenses and using pure silver as the highlight on those. The sword, I knew I also wanted to have a slightly different tone than the rest of the grey metallics. So I painted that in the holster with dark sea blue first, in order to give the metal sort of a blue cast. I've always liked blue steel as an effect, and I wanted to see how well I'd be able to pull it off here with the sword. It's a big canvas, so it was the perfect opportunity. Metallics don't need to look boring. You can add highlights to these just as easily as you can any other section of the model, just using lighter colored metallics. And doing so, if you look at uh, NMM and the way that that's typically painted, and try to paint metallics in the same sort of way, will really help sell the reflective nature of the material. Once again, some more pin washing, just to add definition. There's a lot of little chains and buttons and things on this guy's coat, and I wanted to make sure that they properly stand out. After I'd done all the highlights on the sword, I wasn't really happy with the level of blue that it had to the metal, so I went back over with this blue tone from Army Painter, just to make that sword a little bit more blue. That of course killed some of the highlights, so one more highlight over the top, and then I had my finished effect. It's important to be precise and use the edge of the brush as much as possible when doing these thin little edge highlights. Nothing will ruin your paint job faster than a chunky highlight. It's been a long time since I painted this chapter symbol. When I originally created it, I wanted something that was different and my own. You know, your dudes, like Games Workshop is always encouraging people to do. So I created a symbol that was pretty easy for young me to freehand, and to this day I think it still holds up. The shoulder pad also got some black lining around the green area, once again, just to help it stand out, add more definition, and maybe cover up a few mistakes on the trim. 
With this guy being all black and brown and only a couple of spots of green and blue, I knew I needed some more bright colors. So the purity seals got done in red, as did the little lens on the helmet. And we bookend this miniature by coming back to the base. I've used a bunch of different colors underneath the metal dry brush to provide more variety and grime and grit and discoloration on the industrial metal. The wash and the final dry brush is what really brought this base together though. Without the uh, wash, and, which is a mixture of sepia and black by the way, I don't think this base would have been anywhere near as effective as it was. Then a few little dots of rust here and there, and the base was done. Then, with the base finished painting and weathering up, and the base rim all painted, the build was finally done. And now, finally, we can put him down next to some of my older models. The guy on the left there is one of the first I ever painted. And moving up left through right, we have one from the middle of my old hobby career, the chaplain that I've painted shortly before exiting the hobby for the first time, and the sergeant with the power fist that I painted right after getting it back in. Put next to the new judisher, I think you can agree, and my skills have improved. I've come a long way since I started with that old green and gold marine, and I had a lot of fun doing this one. Let me know what you think of the new marine in the comments. And hey, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave me a like, just push the button at a reasonable velocity, no smashing required.